On the Edge, Jonathan Bird. What a nice Fender Stratocaster work there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Johnny, it's glad to have you back, switching over to mandolin. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. And this is all being put on video, so eventually you might be able to see it on our YouTube channel, which will be a good thing. Yeah. Y'all stay busy here. <laughs> We've got to keep moving forward. I know. Uh, great. One of the neat stories uh, about Mother Tongue is the Kierkegaard and, and Dylan connection, like you mentioned. You can find out about that at mothertongueproject.com and also about your band, your work, Jonathan Bird. Dot com. Mm -hmm. You're playing tonight at the White Horse Black Mountain, an right. 8 o'clock show. The Kierkegaard and Dylan, you, you said that your father, uh, you had a preacher father mm -hmm. who read Kierkegaard, and you also studied it in high school in what was your favorite class in high school. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We had a class called Ethics and Logic. It was an elective. There was a, uh, there was a math teacher who was really a philosophy professor who took a job as a math teacher at a high school. And so when they offered him an elective, he decided to teach ethics and logic. And I didn't even know what that was when I looked at the sheet, but it sounded cool. And, um, I liked logic. It made me think about Spock it was always my favorite character on Star Trek. So I signed up for the class and it turned out to be my favorite class in, in all of my schooling, which I, I was not really, I didn't, I wasn't fond of school. I love that class. And he was so vibrant and passionate and completely unconcerned with the physical world. He would, uh, we had overhead projectors. If you remember those, it'd be a clear sheet of plastic and it would be projected onto the wall. So you write on these things with these sort of, um, I guess the precursor to dry erase pens. And he, he never had a, a rag or anything to erase things with. So he would just lick his finger and like wipe it out. And then he would stick his finger in his ear and he'd have <laughs> green ink in his hair. And it was so great. It was, I just loved him how, how passionate he was. Everybody needs a teacher like that, at least at one oh, point. Yeah. Uh, the forbidden questions, you, you'd mentioned that in another interview about how that can come up in the church. And it led me to think, well, maybe what are the forbidden questions in a broader sense, maybe mm. in society today? Mm. Does your record address any of that? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, possibly, and possibly even this song that we're about to play, although the song is really not a question, it's a statement, which is love is the law. And um, I wrote it after reading a an essay by Kierkegaard that was based on a passage from Romans. It says, love is the fulfillment of the law. Um, and I, I just think anytime people want to exclude other people, that they're not really practicing their spirituality, whatever it is, any spirituality in the world almost is inclusive by nature. And anytime you try to exclude people, um, that you're not really practicing your spirituality. And that's, it's happening a lot and it happens a lot politically and it happens a lot um, coming from people who claim to be spiritual people. And I think those questions, they might be, it's what's well, cool living in the United States because we really, I mean, it is a free country and you can ask any question you want to, but that doesn't mean you're not going to get a reaction and sometimes an even a violent reaction from people for those kinds of things. Yeah, there is a third rail. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I just love, I like, I love that all my gay friends can get married now. Like, I'm just like, yeah, let's love everybody. Whatever anybody has access to, just give everybody access to all those things. Like, I, I remember um, a friend of mine, I was in high school, and a friend of mine took me to this gay bar in Durham. It was called the, uh, it's called the Power Company. And I, I, I mean, I was a like redneck. Like, I've never seen anything like that. And they were having a, a, Miss, a Miss America pageant in drag. And I just, I remember thinking two things. One, it's, it takes a lot of courage to be different. And two, there's a place for everybody. And it really, um, it allowed me to feel like there was a place for me as kind of a weirdo inside myself. There's a place for me. And there are people out there who are going to love me. Even though my family doesn't really understand what I'm doing as an artist, it's cool because somebody does. And uh, I just want to include everybody. Well, let's hear it. All right. 